Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. Something. Now, when it comes to the subject of relationship and family life, it's very, very broad um, it really cannot be exhausted because you are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. You are not dealing subjects about faith and so on and so forth. You can exhaustively discuss them, but when it comes to issues of relationship and family life, it's very broad. Every, every family is a peculiar case on its own. Hallelujah. So it's very difficult to be able to encapsulate a principle that works as it were 100 percent and the only hope we have for that is the word of god opinions of men suggestions from counselors can only go so far there are many geographical differences and so on and so forth so because of all of these things um our focus please understand this our focus on the relationship and family life series is to cover number one the principles of entering a relationship that's the first aspect pastor jake started it and then i was able to touch that last week just to guide us on the preparation and the process of entering a relationship a godly relationship then number two and that's what we'll be discussing today maintaining your relationship whether marriage or marriage slash relationship you can write it we'll be sharing some principles and then generally principles for successful marriage like i said we can only touch so far and we'll pray we have a goal in the family life series to be able to guide us and we have discovered that these are the major areas hallelujah our congregation is predominantly made up of young people and so we have to focus our teachings um, so we spoke about the preparation and the principles the process of entering a relationship you can get the teachings they are free please make sure you get it if you don't get it you may have a hard time trying to follow up with us now I had so many text messages from ladies this week hallelujah so many questions you cannot imagine hallelujah some of you were writing questions that i know is you sir what if there's somebody you just know that they're talking about themselves they want to use third party eventually you forget that you are using third party communication and then you say what if there are some there's somebody and then the brother tells you you just know that they're not there. why don't you tell me this is my problem and this and that hmm? one lady sent a text and says sir you have to talk about this thing today i mean she like three or four pages and she really wanted it by god's grace we'll talk about some of these things i appreciate only one guy only one guy sent me a text hallelujah only one guy ladies god bless you don't keep quiet until you find the right answers it's better to talk than to act foolishly is that correct ask your questions don't keep quiet about it until you are absolutely satisfied there's a saying in house that the person who is always inquiring about the road will not be missing but the one who says i know the road then when it backfires you begin to blame people okay so we're going to be talking about something very interesting now 
There are two books that I would recommend and most of our teachings will come from some of those books. Number one, Gary Chapman, Five Love Languages. Don't say, ah, I've read it. Just keep quiet. Don't, let, don't even start this night. Keep quiet and listen. Number two, Love and Respect, Dr. Emerson Egrich. Powerful books. They are believers. They love God. They are very, very serious with God. Time-tested principles they've been into. Marriage counseling and relationships using biblical perspectives for more than three decades. And so we'll be teaching around this. And of course, the greatest of all is the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so two scriptures before we start off tonight. Once again, turn, laugh with your neighbor. Give him a hug, a shake. Do it quickly. Tell him I wish you good luck in today's ride. Doesn't matter how the, the plane goes. Be sure we will land. We must land before the grace. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 3 verse 7. 1 Peter 3 7. While I was preparing this note, I was laughing. I was already imagining some of you. You know, one day, I, I, am I? Sometimes I feel like I'm a clown on stage. When I'm trying to be serious, some of you are really laughing. Likewise, ye husbands. Don't say I'm not married. You will be married. So listen. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them who the wives, okay. If you read the preceding verses, dwell with them according to all the brothers. Read it one, two, read likewise. Who are the husbands? Likewise, us, we men, we will dwell with them according to. So the Bible says you live with a woman according to, it didn't say according to love. Are you following me now? Look, when it comes to women, you, owe, you can coexist according to... How many of you have roommates that you love, but you know next session, you are certainly not going to stay together? Do you hate them? But there is no knowledge. No wonder it's ladies that are raising their hands. The brothers can manage, the ladies cannot take it again. Because it takes knowledge to dwell with a woman. Ladies can be as complicated as laptops. I was thinking of what to say. My mind was booting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to talk about a few... Listen, please. What I want to talk about right now is very important. Please. If you are sleeping now, it's the time to wake up. Listen very carefully with your eyes, your spirit, your mind, whatever you can use to listen. I want to talk about something. Everybody write, emotional obsession. Very interesting word. We are going to discuss it. Emotional obsession. We're talking of maintaining your relationship now or maintaining your marriage. Look up, please. 90% of relationships, including Christian relationships, 90% of believers enter relationships among other reasons because of what I call emotional obsession you know what an emotional obsession is an emotional obsession is that that feeling huh brother that is like how do I describe it now songs of Solomon says love is stronger than death that's the kind of feeling. 
where out of your whole 24 hours the best is the five minutes you were able to speak with the sister so two guys one brother one lady quick ella come and stand quickly who abel appreciate them quickly please come and stand my brother stand so abel elijah sorry it doesn't matter i'm you uh, it's an example am i calling him elijah oh yeah now elijah has been attending koinonia he knows that she's in prayer band and now elijah is praying Elijah is before him elijah cannot sleep you wake up by three and you're just sitting down elijah what is wrong is it truly me too i don't know you call every one of your roommates ella sorry um, ella sam sorry this this is called it's not wrong are you listening to me it's not wrong emotional obsession or oh, she grew, she she wakes up by three o'clock in the night and picks her biro and on her pillow she's now drawing flowers people are sleeping there's no light you are using your phone drawing flowers oh we know it oh we don't need to come to your hostel to know it then you draw a hand elijah's hand collecting the flower and that's that drive you come for fellowship you are sweating you've not seen ella Sam is, you are covering my view, Sam. You are just looking around. If per adventure you see a light, you come early, but you sit down outside. You are waiting until the arrival of hell, and then you start laughing. That's when your, your praise and worship becomes living, active, full of life, full of power. They say, greet your neighbor. You've not greeted the people around you. You've gone, Ella, how are you? Even you can't help it. You can, it's a fuel that you cannot quench. Hallelujah. Now, listen. And this is most for ladies because, you see, it takes a long time for ladies to arrive there. Guys get that easily. As easy as it comes, it just goes. You are in a dinner and you look at Ella and you are like, Hey! God, talk to me or I will talk to you. Talk to me or I will talk. Somebody must talk to somebody this night hallelujah then one morning you are passing and you just see the lady in the morning and she just back her hair anyhow and you're like ah god please don't say any is this the lady I so that this emotional obsession is very impulsive in guys it takes a while for it to crystallize in ladies but when it catches them hallelujah i'm sure they know themselves that's why they run away the moment they start seeing any guy because they know what can happen it's like super glue you will sit down there when he catches you free bus transport going on uh, after after the grace go you will trek not because you there was no space in the bus you were waiting has she gone bros and the guy there's always a witness helping you and encouraging you say so, oh yeah you just do as if he's looking at the protocol and he's just looking and he comes he's around yeah yeah go down emotional obsession now this is powerful because it's really the distinguishing factor it's what helps you listen see look at two guys shaking themselves i saw two of you i saw you and i congratulate you for shaking yourselves i wish you a safe ride safe journey we'll be ready to help you wherever hallelujah praise god now please understand this emotional obsession is very powerful because that's what can make a brother to use his money for lunch and buy recharge card and be patient sleep is drowsing his eyes but he's praying waiting for five minutes past 12. the guy is just trolling his roommates are starving they bought gary he kept his own money it's called obsession where the energy came from you were not fasting but you've not eaten yet you are not bothered you are not bothered 
five minutes past 12 your eyes will just clear you just start flashing hoping that the lady will flash back once the lady flashes back whether mtn whether there's network or no network if there is only one spot near your room even if it's a window you stand like this you can stand later you find out ah five minutes to four you are just hissing this thing is entering you here coming out here it's called obsession at least since it does not happen for every lady or every guy it helps you to be able to narrow down your decision and it helps you know that you are making a good decision are you following me but the trouble is this most guys or most ladies really that's why about 90 percent of ladies enter a relationship and two weeks later they feel like going out you know why because emotional obsession cannot be the fuel for your relationship are you following me now let me tell you something every relationship including between you and jesus christ every kind of relationship at a point must take faith and a factor other than just your emotions to sustain it are you hearing what i'm saying very important now hold on two of you are going out let's assume it has worked for you now finally doesn't matter what happened in between the long and short is now this has worked they are going out suddenly this brother now starts reducing his time from one one hour 45 minutes 15 minutes and it just stops at the 10 minutes mark and this lady is busy asking herself come on is that how is happening in your own relationship because i don't understand these guys who so guys are very funny before we started going out he used to call me for 30 minutes but now i don't i can't understand why it's only two or three minutes let me tell you something most ladies love the euphoria and the excitement you took her to mr biggs every week you ensured that money came out faith was working every koinonia message of faith produced for you you forced it to work there was one one thousand every week here marked for maintaining this process but now that it has happened you have suddenly gassed out that energy is not there one day the lady just tries and said ah, how about that chicken have you eaten mr big chicken for a while say, oh, please don't we're trying to conserve resources right here as if you didn't know it before so the the issue of emotional obsession listen this is why many relationships this is why western people cannot stay three days or one week are you following me now as quickly as they enter they pack their loads and go the reason is because the only factor was emotional obsession so the guy entered and you saw this posh guy eh? he was he was a lamborghini that dropped him ladies don't pretend like what i'm saying is not making sense the guy just comes out and now you are just looking what they call it tall dark and handsome very nice guy and now you are looking pinching your friend immediately the guy says can he come for before he finishes he says have oh, my pleasure two weeks later i hate this guy guys are wicked i hate them calm down this night we are going to explain what is really wrong what's the problem everybody say emotional obsession emotional obsession is good but there is a level if you allow that to govern your relationship or to show whether your relationship is working or not you are going to get into trouble ask any married man a time comes where what is fueling them is commitment it's, it's not just emotional obsession I saw my father annoy my mother in a way that I knew if he was my mother that would be it I will call a pastor and say we need your attention in this family yet my mother will go and cook the the, the insult has not finished oh. the whole bag bag is still on and she'll be serving him when she finishes she'll sit down to continue the argument ah that 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 cannot be obsession hallelujah what's your surname 
Give us an English name. Okay, Elijah. Let's assume you are Mr. Elijah. Now you finish cheering yourself, cheering yourself, cheering yourself. And people see her and say, ah, Mrs. Elijah, say, how are you? How is your husband? Fine. Yet, you have not finished, so you are going back. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, many people, especially unbelievers, have based their relationship on that tingly feeling, that feeling of obsession. He's the only person in your world. She's the only person in your world. Hallelujah. You have exams tomorrow. By 3, you are still together. The exam is by 8. You know you will pass. The lady says, please, I care about you. It's academics. What? Eh? I, I, I can make it. I've been making it in this school. I've been making it. Don't spoil this atmosphere. Right? I, I, it will work. Just don't worry. God is faithful. It's like fire. You can't help it. You can't explain it. Hallelujah. And then for many people, when they get into the relationship or they get married, after a while, there are many names that the guy used to call you. He found Greek and Hebrew names just for you. Shining star. What again? What are the names? Ladies, tell me the names the guys call you. Oh yeah. What? Princess. Every lady's name is princess and angel. They like it. My name is angel. My name is princess. So the guys call all of those names. They are, they are ways of trying to manage that fire at the moment. The time you just call and say, Ella, it's time for fellowship. Oh, let's go. She said, ah, what is wrong? Say, please, is he your name or not your name? Did your father give you the name? And now Ella is beginning to be worried. Is it that this guy doesn't love me again? Hallelujah. Please, are you following me now? Emotional obsession is good, but relationship cannot be sustained just from the emotional realm are you listening to me many people believe you get your relationship by that tingly feeling and you feel the more i keep feeling so obsessed that's what happens to white men two weeks after their relationship they find out that that fire that fervency is not here and they just say we are not meant for each other now they go to look for another person. So they are allowing that obsession. And this is the problem that some of you have. You are, you are allowing your emotional obsession to be the governing factor. It's like a thermometer that helps you to know whether your relationship or your marriage is working or not. If that's what you are using, Satan will deceive you big time. Are you listening to me? So, have you understood emotional obsession now? Commitment. Everybody write. Commitment. Okay, leave yourselves again. Look up. This is a very dangerous word. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Commitment is not a very nice word if you understand all that it entails. Let me tell you the truth commitment many people run away from this word called commitment hallelujah there are many guys today and many ladies today who the reason why they are not in relationships is because they are afraid of commitment you know what commitment is commitment entails sacrifice many guys and ladies alike are not willing to pay that sacrifice of commitment. Don't let anybody fool you. Genuine relationship takes sacrifice. You will forgo a lot of things. Some relationships and marriages will even change you. It will change you. Ask our mothers and they will tell you. Any woman who is married here will agree with me. It will change you. I remember years ago, two of our, our members got married and 
One time we went for somebody else's wedding. And the lady who got married is a very playful lady. She likes jumping. She can jump up and down and play. Hallelujah. Now she was married. And then she saw some of our other sisters who were not married. They were jumping and playing. And you could see it pushing her. I mean, she wanted to join. I saw the way it was eating her up. But no way. There was a ring in her hand that was telling her, behave. Behave. Everybody say commitment entails sacrifice. Many people do not want to pay that sacrifice to maintain your relationship, to maintain your marriage. It's what is very difficult for many people. Commitment entails contentment. Everybody say contentment. That's the reason why a man can marry. A woman can marry. There are men and women today who do not know what they want. Ten years after marriage, they are still looking around and changing. They lack contentment. Everybody say contentment. You know what contentment is? Contentment is getting to a point where you derive fulfillment and satisfaction. A Lamborghini is good. A Porsche Shaheen is good. Hallelujah. What other car again? Tell me one more. Don't mention anything you are not sure of. A Bentley is good. But you see, you can have your CRV and be contented. Are you listening to me? Contentment is very important. The Bible says, Proverbs 31, 31. It says, many daughters have done excellently, but Thou excellest them all. Many people like contentment. They lack it in life. That's why nothing can be enough. There are people in life you can never please. They, they always want more. They are never satisfied. Hallelujah. This is the problem with many relationships. There are many relationships that are not contented. And let me tell you something. If you find yourself talking to the guy or the lady, many people like comparing relationships. It's a terrible thing. Never do that. Hold our hands again. Two of you are going out. Say, Elijah, you used to wear nice suits before. Why this one that you are looking like? You have been embarrassing me. Oh, it has been paining me today. I'm saying it. Hallelujah. And then suddenly, who is with suit again? Sam, stand up. Now, she's already been dissatisfied with Elijah. Why? Because he didn't used to wear the suit she used to know him to wear before. Do you know that if you do not have contentment, little things can take away your passion? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Suddenly, Sam is coming with his suit. Elijah, you're in trouble. Look, there's fire on the mountain. Elijah doesn't know. Elijah doesn't know why her commitment is not. She's already seen Sam. See Sam's shirt. Two colors. In her heart, she has met Sam already. Oh. Elijah is there smiling. This is how many people are. Listen, listen, listen. This is very important. In life, can I tell you something? Brothers, get it straight. Even if you get the best lady you believe right now, you will see somebody better than her one day by every standard true or false sisters you will see prince charming in koinonia and may god help you go somewhere hey, you will see prince charming plus you will see another prince charming that will make you not to sleep many of us have this craving that cannot say enough not just for relationship you have a car you have your small golf you are starting small. The day you see somebody's bends, it's as if you should squeeze your golf and just throw it away. They say, whose car is this? They say, eh, please, what is your business? Can't you see things and leave it? To come and say, this is my golf. I bought it. It's a fruit of hard work. 500,000 with faith on top is what brought me this golf. One day, I would, I would turn this golf into a, a Bentley. But for now, this is golf. This is what many of us, many of us, many of us, 
You are in a relationship. God bless you, Sam. The lady cannot speak English very well. You too, you came from the village. So it was not a big deal. You just connected. Suddenly you found out that your CGPA was doing well. And you had a brother who stayed in UK as your roommate. And eventually metamorphosis, orientation, your, your, your village English is being changed and polished. And now you can speak Queen's English. You, you can speak all the oral English and everything. Hallelujah. Suddenly you start looking at the lady and in your mind you are like, ah, God, I don't know how to manage this thing now. Our levels have changed. So. Hallelujah. Now you don't know how to tell this sister and say, Tor, we came from the same village. Yes. As at the time I met you, two of us were managing in the same realm. But maybe you gave me scholarship. I went to UK for three months or for PhD or this and now I'm back from UK so I can't relate with you again. Nonsense. Hallelujah. I was told that the, what was the name of that Nigerian lady who got Miss Walt? The guy who was going out with her. The moment she qualified for international this the guy just left he just knew that there's there's no point wasting time this is how many of us are you lack contentment you can never say enough you just turn and you see another lady with nice with one sister please stand up you uh-huh see her beautiful with one and you just look suddenly you look at her like you you don't do with one eh? Yeah. it's dangerous because many people think marriage will solve that problem I assure you it will solve it that's why you can see a man in a car when he's with maybe his daughter's friend he's smiling how are you where is your father but when he's with his wife you will know what of the, the fuel did they bring it he's driving you know? she's saying yes she's turning her face Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Number three, commitment entails patience. Patience. One of the greatest shocker for people in relationship is that when they enter, they suddenly find out that all you saw in the guy or the lady is not all there is. It's a rude shock. Hallelujah. Commitment entails tolerance. Many of you are not tolerant at all. Look up, please. Now, let me say something. Many people enter relationship with their idea of what it should look like. Hallelujah. Some of you have been so battered by the complex you grew up with that your relationship is a revenge mission. You didn't tell the guy but you have been so psychologically whipped that you have sworn to yourself that this guy is that donkey that Jesus used to ride. He said, brother, are you willing? You kept asking the guy, do you truly love me? The guy didn't understand. He said, yes. You truly love Yes. The brother didn't wait. He said, okay, well, let's do. After one month, nobody tells the brother, the guy is dying. His pocket money has finished savings finish he has sold his laptop he sold his blackberry his other shoe he has sold it in your mind you are saying you've not seen anything no you better keep selling i went through a lot of pain we didn't eat meat in our house i'm revenging so you better there are many ladies that your concept of relationship is a revenge all the things you've gone through all the names they called you you will ride on that brother until he knows that he asks you out and you believe that your beauty is a consolation for all this pain one day like a donkey the brother will just die brother will say this thing i'm not doing it again 
Hallelujah. It gets bad when your family joins in the ride. The mother says, let's ride. Oh. You said the guy is purpose driven. Oh yeah. Ask him to send some money. You have not married the girl. Yet they said there's one contribution they are doing somewhere. Ah. The brother is saying, do they know me? He says, shall I bring it? How much? 15,000, 5,000 my own transport. The guy now goes to ask Pastor Jakes and say, if somebody is in a relationship and the family is already asking him to bring money, is he right? There are many people, listen, listen please. That's why it's good to think well. Oh. It's good to think well. There are some families that are suffering. They are crying for a savior. If you are coming to be that savior, hear God first. Hear God first. There are families that things are not working well. I tell you, things are not working well. They need a man to help them. You, you just came. I'm that man. The mother looked at you the day you came. Can you carry it? Before they finish, say yes. You carry it. Now you are dying. The load is killing you. You know, we counsel people so we know the things that we hear. Hallelujah. Ladies, relationship is not a revenge mission. Please. Don't say I've been feeling calm. I've, I've suffered inferiority complex. Now this guy. The guy wants to spend 10 minutes with God. You're already angry. The Bible says whatever God has joined. What is all that? Must he go with you? You came late for a program. He's sitting in front. You are frowning. Why didn't he sit with me? Ah, this is insecurity. Hallelujah. And many of you do not know there are there are there are there are people who when they are in a relationship like this especially certain guys suddenly when you see ella just whisper something to jakes you are not talking to her again no? what did you tell jakes what did you tell him that you couldn't tell me and the lady said no 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 look at your bible says the bible study what i've been watching you that's how you told this guy the other day you said this and that and that And then same with ladies. A sister comes to ask somebody who has been helping her before you even came. And now the brother just calls her, corners her, gives her 1,000. The lady, she will do as it. Oh, ladies can see. They will pretend they didn't see it. Even if they didn't see it, their friends, oh yeah, yeah, I see. Immediately you see, they'll turn. It's during their regular, regular what? Meeting. The issue will come up. Say in this relationship, we are not honest with one another. The brother will say, really? Say we are not honest. God knows there's no honesty in this thing. When people are giving people money, how can there be honesty? Who are the people? Who are the other people they gave? We don't know. Say me, I won't talk again. I don't want trouble. You have already spoken. The trouble is there already. Mm. Hallelujah. Commitment entails responsibility. Listen, look at me. There are many people that love koinonia. You love koinonia. But the moment they say, um, why don't you join a department? Once you hear anything that will commit you, you are finding your way. There is a beautiful dinner coming up. Next week, you are smiling. The price is, aha, uh -huh, commitment. Anything, there are people who, especially guys, brother, if you are still afraid of commitment, don't ever, if you are seeing any lady in your dream, stop it. Stop it. Stop seeing her. Because you are only playing. There are many brothers here. They, they are not committed. Have you seen people like that? There's nothing that is worth their time and their attention. They want to be average in everything. Small here, small here. So long as it doesn't commit me. Hallelujah. 
He said, I'm in prayer department. But he said, what, what kind of members are in prayer department? I dare, me, I'll just be coming when I want to. I hope you are not offended. Why wouldn't you be committed? Everybody wants things that, he said, I'm in welfare. But the thing is that the nature of my life is that there are times when I may not be around. Let me tell you, there is nothing good that happens in life without commitment. Is that correct? You are seeing the worship people standing. This is commitment. It's not like they don't know how to sit. Many of you, you run away from anything that will bring responsibility. Hallelujah. You are in a relationship with a lady. One day she just says, sorry, oh, please don't think I'm materialistic. I've not spoken with my mother for a while. Can you help me with five? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. She has not mentioned. Aha. Uh -huh. See you. Joshua Selman said, People should not be disturbing us. You are the kind of. Ah, bah. 500 naira for the charge card. Greedy and stingy people hate commitment because it will require them to give out something. Greedy people. That's why they don't have many friends. They don't like anything. Don't come and say, we're having a get-together. Everybody bring money. Uh-uh. Or bring as the spirit leads. They don't like that kind of thing. Commitment. Listen. Every marriage I know of that has worked did not just work because of emotions. Are you listening to me? We're going to be very practical today. Have you seen a man and his wife a man who has accident for instance in the course of their marriage and he's now confided on wheelchair and the wife is still standing and they are celebrating their anniversary together and the wife is saying if god gives us another life i will marry you my brother my sister this cannot be emotion are you understanding what i'm saying it it cannot be emotion the day the guy fought with somebody they blew his eyes Suddenly you came and saw somebody with one dark eye. Your friend, he was coming. You just turn and tell your friends, ah, please, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to run somewhere. You are a child. You, have not, you are not ready for marriage. Is this kind of secondary school thing people do? Hallelujah. Many of you feel embarrassed at just any little thing. Rain beats the guy. He just entered somewhere and he's smiling. They're like, ah, this guy is falling my hand. You better, you better stop it. He's taking you out. All the money he has is what can sponsor two of you. The remaining change is 100 or 200. I say, let's enter bus. And now while you are entering, you see other people in their relationship. The guy just turned, just does hunt for you. Out of a sincere heart to just say hello, the lady is just getting uncomfortable in the bus. Ah, sweet, I was wrong. Please, you are already embarrassed. You want the guy to go and steal so that he will make you happy. Many ladies have led our brothers into unbelievable things because they think they want to protect their image. That's why many ladies want guys that they can control. Some of you even say it proudly. You better repent this night. Did you hear what I said? change repent say i like a guy my own guy everybody will sit down everybody is talking about their own. my own guy yo i can flash him now now and he will flash me back if i tell him i'm not happy right now is 15 text messages I'll get before I sleep. And if you dare me, I will do it. You are using the guy like a caricature and you are smiling. God is watching. God will pick him and give somebody who deserves him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I assure you. Stop it. Your relationship is not a revenge mission. Yes, we know you suffered growing up. Manage your, your, your predicaments. That's why you receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, I receive grace to be committed. 
I receive grace to be committed. Because there are many of you, the kind of man or woman you are looking for has not yet been born. With the, the, the attitude you have, I assure you, the person has not been born. Hallelujah. You are not willing to sacrifice anything. You are not willing to be patient. You are not willing to build. Most of us want ready-made relationships. Ready-made. Unfortunately, there's nothing called ready-made relationships. He can look at her and like her. You've not seen her when she's angry. You've not seen her when she's broke. You've not seen her when she's under pressure. You too, you have not seen him. He's wearing nice suits now. You don't know what happens when his CGA pierce nose diving. You don't know what he can become. That's why you need God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, let me tell you something. This is why I personally believe that campus relationship is one of the best kinds of relationship you know why because at that point you see the brother when he wakes up you see his drowsy eyes there's nothing that is hidden he can't lie for long you've seen the shoe you followed him to the shoemaker to help and patch it so you know that this guy doesn't have much you were the one who helped him to bargain the, the 500 naira material you begged the tailor to sew it for him so your love is genuine because it's not tied to anything. That's why many people, many people who already become blessed and wealthy hardly make good marital decisions. Which lady will not want a guy who, let me tell you something. Some people, have, some ladies have suffered who we'll talk about it. Once you enter 300 level, your mother calls you, Ella, come here. Say, come and sit here. Come now, Ella. Say, Ella, what did we eat day before yesterday? Beans. What did we eat yesterday? Beans. What did we eat today? I didn't have the opportunity to enjoy what you can enjoy. What I'm trying to say is this. A rich man is better than a poor man. Leave all those campus promising brothers look at nigeria no jobs what is the guarantee when do you want to marry say next year say find somebody that looks like next year don't find somebody that doesn't look like it's not like i'm telling you not to choose or i wouldn't choose for when they're already choosing for you hallelujah are you learning something this night so ella now comes and begins to scout one promising serious brother in decoration you are serving labor in the house of god but all you have is the promise of god no manifestation yet you just come to ella and say um ella i uh <laughs> they don't even think about it oh. i know where you are going let me help you get there you are wasting your time oh, because of what the mother has already told her so she's scouting around looking for this poshed military officer in in Jaji or army officer or director in bank and every time she enters UBA she's just smiling at the staff because you want to please your mother and then 10 years later you have not married and then you come and see that brother that you used to see his shoe when he's praying in koinonia because he doesn't want it to tear he will remove it and keep it but he's praying he's fasting Later, you see the guy drop from his car and look and say, Ah, I know you now. And you're like, Yes, sir, I know you too. I know you. I know you. I know where I met you, sir. Say, Sir, have you married? He says, Ah, this is my little junior. Come. You are, you are in for it this night, oh. Brothers, appreciate me if I'm helping you. Mm. Hallelujah. We're still talking about commitment. Many people run away from commitment. 
many people we hate commitments in the house of god commitment to your friends commitment to your family commitment to your work say i receive grace to be committed hallelujah please celebrate them hallelujah emotional obsession is not enough i hope you've learned that now because there are some of you who are wondering is my relationship is in nose diving but then you will find out that this tingly emotional feeling is not all there is to relationship you will grow up and you will begin to take the burden of love the burden of responsibility hallelujah you take last your father will whip you Yet you go to the bank to withdraw school fees. He will talk and say, Me, may God punish me if I pay your school fees. But before resumption, he brings the receipt. Where are you? Come. If you like, go back to school. Yet he said, May God punish me. I said, Even for God, the burden of love. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of you are learning something now the third thing i want you to know about maintaining relationships we spoke about emotional obsession that as good as it is it's not enough number two commitment we spoke about commitment your commitment must be beyond your emotions to sustain any marriage must be far beyond a determination number three communication and this is where we will dwell seriously today everybody say communication hallelujah how many of you have read the book five love languages let me see your hands how many of you have read any book on relationship and marriage aside from married people you see what we are saying look at me what you do not place value for you will not excel in. are you listening to me whatever you do not whatever you do not respect leaves you whatever you appreciate comes to you so i'll take an extract from five love languages when it comes to communication hallelujah please look up hold on Gary Chapman, in his years of research about marriage and relationship, why homes work and why homes do not work, came up with what he called five love languages. Look up, please. Now, a love language talks of a, a means of communication. Are you listening to me? The way and manner to which people want love expressed to them so that they can feel its effect. Are you listening to me? I can love you. Eh? Are you following me? I can love you, but until you are convinced, that means I must find ways of relating that love in a way that it relates to your realm. Is that correct? Are you following me? And this is what Gary Chapman called love languages. In his research, he found out that many relationships were broken and many homes were broken because the couple or the spouses did not know how to communicate love to one another are you following me now and so he found out in his years and decades of counseling that honestly many couples that were fighting in homes actually loved themselves but what they lacked was the art of communicating the love are you following me now to one another in a way that they will interpret it as love now um Come, my dear. I was looking for a lady with this kind of hair. Come. Now, if I look at this lady, are you listening to me? And I look at her, and I say, ah, see your multicolored hair. Do you know, I may say it as a means of expressing that I like it, correct? 
but she can receive it as an insult have i communicated love to her but do i love her are you are you getting me now so i come and say see your multicolored hair this is supposed in my own thinking this is a beautiful compliment when i expected a hug where's your hand what is a slap if you don't like the hair tell me to change it don't insult me like that bless you five love languages number one he found out that now all of these love languages are applicable to everybody but there is what we call the primary love language the primary love language is the best and most effective means that an individual interprets receives the feeling of love are you following me now number one words of affirmation whether you've read the book write it gary chapman found out that there were many men that what they wanted was words or men and women words of affirmation i will explain them very quickly number two acts of service acts of service from the acts of the apostles acts of service media if you can help us words of affirmation that's number one love language number two acts of service number three receiving gifts receiving gifts am i too fast number four quality time quality time and number five physical touch start it start that one start it and follow me number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four what quality time five physical touch look up please gary chapman in his in his in his research found out that almost every human being had one of these as his primary or her primary love language what is word a uh, word of affirmation this is mostly strong for men look up please for many men words of affirmation is their primary love language two people again oh yeah now you and somebody sweetheart come don't be afraid don't worry bless you stand here you stand here words of affirmation listen men are visionary men are purpose driven are you listening to me so words of i'm sorry words of affirmation is that assuming this is a husband and a wife and she's telling him she's saying look sweetheart i know that our finances is not in the best position right now but do you know that the man that i met is more visionary than the man that i'm seeing now this guy is broke you are suffering there's no food at home but now he's depressed words of affirmation you are telling him look like you always used to tell us we are coming out of this do you still believe it i believe in you remember when you said god told you that this ministry will blossom the guy just nods what are you doing you are speaking his primary language of love you are affirming are you following me now it's an affirmation you are letting him know that i believe in you and i'm not letting circumstances dictate it food may not be in the house but i'm ready to stand by you words of affirmation and suddenly this guy looks and he says look even if we come back in another planet you is you that i'll marry again that's why you see some guys go through hell and high water as soon as they come out they marry the girl that was there for them straight even if she was a villager because as far as they are concerned that was the person who was able to speak their love language hallelujah rain wash jordan bookstore for instance 
and everybody is just sending texts. Oh God, Jordan, God help you. And then one sister comes and says, Jordan, how can I help? Look, something like this happened to my brother, and so I can understand. Ha! Ah! Jordan won't sleep. Jordan won't sleep. Jordan will just smile. I didn't know you will answer me this way. I didn't know you will answer me this way. She just spoke his love language. Everybody say words of affirmation. Very few ladies have words of affirmation as their primary love language, but they do. Number two, acts of service. There are many people that are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. Especially ladies. Hallelujah. So this lady is, is, is walking in the kitchen. Eh? Put your hands here. You are walking in the kitchen. You are washing plates now. You put the other hand. Do you wash plates with one hand? That's right. Now, she's, she's washing plates. And then this guy. How many of you know this kind of big CD in our house? That you just touch something and then your father is just listening to his reggae. Remembering his days. And the mother is just sweating and angry in the kitchen. First she starts singing hymns. The song is playing loud. But she's singing. What a friend we have in Jesus. She's angry. Your father doesn't know. Because her primary love language may be acts of service. Martha in the Bible had her primary love language as the act of service. That's why she was angry when Mary left her just walking and she, at a point she couldn't hide it. She came to Jesus and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Jesus wasn't the thing. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. There are people who are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. I've seen people like that, guys and ladies. So now you come and meet her and you say, um, can I help you? Can I help you wash the plate? She says no. Honestly, she will tell you no. But her satisfaction is that you were able to speak her love language. That you came to show her a helping hand. Are you following me now? Very important. A lady can be holding a book. You say, let me help you. She will still give you the book. You'll be wondering now, wow, what kind of arrogant lady? She may not be arrogant. It's her primary love language. Are you following me now? That's why there can be a beehive of guys around her. But it's the person who can speak her love language. The race is not to the swift, though. The battle is not to the strong. Somebody is buying Mr. Biggs. Buy Mr. Biggs. She will carry the Mr. Biggs and be sharing it with the brother that is doing acts of service for her. You say, somebody was generous to me. One brother brought Mr. Biggs. Can we eat together? We've been working together. She got a room off key. The guy came to help her. Humble, they were sweeping together. Ah, ah! Later, she will stop and be looking. Ah, she's seen her husband. The other guy is just sending Mr. Biggs. She will call that guy and say, Kai, I was sweeping my room today. The guy will say, really? That means you're hungry. Say, eh, well, not immediately it comes. They will share it with her real husband. That's why some of you guys have been suffering because you don't know the road to the city. Number three, receiving gifts. Now look up, please. This is very important. There are many people who are obsessed about receiving gifts. Especially ladies. It's not materialism. It's their love language. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen ladies every time you are traveling say, what will you get for me? I tell you that's a big sign that receiving gifts is their love, is their primary love language. And truly you think they are playing. You will carry your big mouth and say, I will buy chicken. I will. You think they will forget. When you come, they are looking at many things. They are just looking at what looks like chicken around your hand. You didn't bring it to find out that they are suddenly edgy. They are angry. They are not cooperating. What happened? Hallelujah. They love it. They love gifts. It's not about the cost. Even if it's one sweet. You just say, guess what? What's your name? 
Regina, beautiful name. Regina, I just bought one eckless, eckless, or Tom Tom, Tom Tom self. She doesn't have kata. But she said, Really? Ha ha. Kai, that was so touching. Five naira. Five naira. But that's her love language. That's the guy's love language. There are guys like that. There are men of God like that. Their love language is you must come with something. If not, the anointing will not be stirred up. They must receive something. Number four, let's run. Quality time. Aha. Quality time. Hold on now. Husband and wife. Now, quality time is so important. Hallelujah. Businessmen, pilots, soldiers, oil company workers, pastors, listen, accountants, students, time. And this is not just ladies. There are guys that want time like ladies. So, there are people, this is their primary love language. Now, this guy is offshore two weeks. Two weeks is drilling oil for Nigeria. You are drilling oil. You are drilling oil. This lady is there. Once they spend one day, they don't see you. That time, their body starts, they are obsessed about time. There are ladies like that. The guy says, um, I'll come and see you in two hours. Even if it's accident that happened. And he got, even if it's accident, he's bringing the trouser that tore. Say, see, I brought this to explain. You see, I, I changed trouser. She said, I'm, I'm not hearing anything. No. You're on your own. Because the way you have been behaving, this relationship. Tear the guy up and down. The guy has to prepare a special atmosphere. That will repay what would have happened. And now says, I just wanted you to know that I'm at the dam now. I'm waiting for you. Say, eh, which part of the dam? Aha. Uh -huh. Attention. Time. With who? No, I'm alone. I'm alone. Alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say, me, I want to sleep now. And the guy say, Have I did all this for you? So yeah, I'm coming. She will drop it and start smiling start doing all our foundation put everything do everything you're on your way running and then when you get there you are happy because he's speaking your love language physical touch i said you should start it oh the reason is because please look up and i must say this we are christians the emotional nature please listen i say this all the time i know there are some of you who just frown and say please jerry all these people you are trying to many of these books you read you see in america a guy can go out with this lady and be having a french kiss with her christians they love god in the presence of her parents and they'll be happy oh dear they'll be remembering their own but the problem is because of the please listen this is important the context of our culture are you listening to me and the effect because we are emotional beings by the time there are many ladies that are obsessed and guys too their primary love language is touch now when i talk of touch i'm not talking of immorality they are not bad honestly they are not corrupt i follow me now they like hugging this is a hugging generation there are times that we are counseling ladies and as soon as they come you see bishop do it sometimes here or jakes when they come they are trying to fight their tears and what happens the love language of a touch if your mind is not if your mind has a problem with it please just come for counseling because the bible says to the pure all things are pure there are some of you that anything in your mind say how can a guy stand here please i beg please Let's, let's learn first. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Very important. Now, of course, I'm not saying in a relationship you have to say, see you, minimum distance. This is how we are. No. But, but listen. 
you must be careful look up please are you learning are we christians here yeah? are we christians please everything we are saying is within the jurisdiction of the kingdom i don't know what you have learned from nigerian films but we are christians this is a lady you are physically attracted to is that true please answer me is that true now ah see we are human beings so you are a man no you are a woman no be careful hallelujah by the time you start doing some funny things like saying okay you want to lap this lady even if a bible is in front of two of you and you are doing bible study there's trouble it may not happen that day but be sure you're on the way to destruction I know what I'm saying will offend some of you. It doesn't make sense. But let me tell you, help yourself. Praise God. What did I say? Help yourself. So, try to minimize, minimize, minimize the love language of touch. When you are married, back your wife and go out with her. That's your, back her. Go out with her. That's your cup of tea. Let everybody know that two of you, your love language is touch. At least you are married but that you are single and then some things you and the person may know you are pure but you see the report before men especially if you are a leader are you listening are you following me very important there are some things you do they may not be wrong in themselves but the effect the message it can pass to other people is what is very dangerous. And you must have that staying power to help yourself. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? So if your love language is the touch, please receive grace from God. And understand that it will be minimized until marriage. Hallelujah. When you get married against such, there is no law. Sleep with yourself from morning till night. Back back you that's your cup of tea do whatever you want to do but for now that you are not married help yourself so that you will marry willingly happily and honorably hallelujah so that they won't force you and say okay you have demonstrated to us your willingness to marry in two weeks therefore prepare and do everything please avoid such kind of things because it will make you to hate the person that you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Is somebody hearing this? So if you have been in a relationship or if you are married, that's okay. You are exempted from all this. But if you are in a relationship, there are some of you that do funny things. You just stand. I, I saw one guy around social center and he was, I can't even begin to describe what I saw. Around that place where they park. And I know that lady. I'm sure she's a Christian lady. Kai, he was too extreme. Eh? Whether your love language, whatever your love is, too extreme. Please, Christians. Are we together? You're angry, Abby? I will say it. I'm not going to stop it. It's too much. You are doing as if they will steal the woman. Be careful. If you can't, whatever is pursuing you, go and meet her parents. Ah. It's too much. Some things believers do around. I know some of you will not be. It's too bad. Guys come to ladies' hostel or come. It's, it's, too, it's too intimate. It's too expressive. See, you may not go to hell. But you are certainly not going to live a fruitful life because that thing is leading you into trouble. I'm telling you this. Take what I'm saying very seriously. Do you know when your touch for a lady becomes excessive, she starts fading and getting cheap before you? Are you listening to me? There is no, no expectancy again. Ladies, there are some of you. Anybody can touch you anywhere, anyhow, anytime. You don't mind. You are just smiling sheepishly guys will keep changing you and you are just around social center you are around anywhere you just run 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 climb the guy's back and you are laughing he will drop you the other one will carry you what kind of wife do you want to become open your eyes 
open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here open your eyes would you open your ears and then you'll understand that the Lord is here do that you just enter a relationship before you know it you are ah, come on, no. and brothers there are some of you that are shameless may God grant you grace to be disciplined in Jesus name say amen some of you behave as if you are not Christians. You are not the first to enter a relationship. You will not be the last. People who have held themselves for years. Or God, what is pursuing you? Behave yourself. You are just around the lady as if you are as if it's a fly. As anybody, hey, they don't know what do you want? Abba. And there are ladies look at me sisters i'm talking to you now because there are many guys here that got into certain things because of the pressure that the ladies mount many ladies your love language is physical touch be careful what did i say what did i say oh manage yourself i know that biologically speaking there are many biological and psychological reasons as to why ladies will want touch as their primary love language but let me tell you this is why the spirit of god comes are you hearing me you are not an unbeliever you are a christian it is because of physical touch that many people have gotten into pornography hear me please masturbation homosexualism are you following me now lesbianism i will say it all internet pornography and you have done many unthinkable things because of the vulnerability of the human body to the touch this is why you must be careful i'm warning you now be careful i'm speaking to you see my heart and see the love i'm a human being too but i'm telling you be careful so that you will get married happily and honorably praise the lord is that possible is that possible for a christian yes how do you make that possible discuss it see when you enter a relationship the boundaries you don't discuss you will cross discuss it tell him oh, me honestly the way i am see i once counseled a lady years ago listen please. i found out that this lady was so obsessed about physical touch and i knew she was a christian and she loved god and it was it was getting too, ah it was too much she can want to hug you and fly on you you know how superman does as in fly on mercilessly as in this kind loosely and carelessly you know that this one has crossed the boundary by far and i found out that ah, what is there must be something wrong and then i got to find out that she had a medical condition of hormonal imbalance are you following me now this was what was response she did it she had an unusual craving for touch and we had to put this lady under careful surveillance so that we gather against wolves in sheep's <laughs> clothing because there are some let me tell you the church has all kinds of brothers so sometimes that's why you see us guard our sisters sometimes when we see you coming around and you have been too careless, we'll tell you behave. Please, we are watching. Behave. Behave. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Everybody said five love languages. How do you know your partner's love language? By their consistent complaints. Right. Their consistent complaint is a sign that you are not responding to their love language you say every time you travel you don't used to think about me every time you travel that's how you leave me alone even a flash aha quality time she's speaking her love language to you 
if you are smart get it note it and start responding hallelujah praise god very important look at me when you see a lady start talking about can we go to church together can we sit together can we they say high five your neighbor she's looking at you and hoping you look at her back you high five somebody else you will explain it sooner or later she won't forget it that's that's touch there are you following me or a lady that informs you the day you give her this thing she informs you about the date of her next birthday right away so that you start preparing ah, that's that's receiving gifts there brothers have you been sensitive ladies have you been sensitive you see this guy walking all the time he tells you i have a building project i've been trying to build you just land and look at him and say you didn't even see my refund what of words of affirmation why don't you speak his love language that's why you can see a guy will look at the girl and say you are a selfish lady or a guy will look at a visionary brother and say you are very selfish the guy's hand is like this aha uh -huh, receiving gifts this is not quality time if you see ladies and this guy his hand is like this like his big head his hand is like that receiving gifts hallelujah let me give you an assignment do it in one minute right now everybody write your love language find it you know it some of you are laughing some of you say all oh, it's a lie it's a lie no matter what health issue you have you have only one love language don't say yeah me to the doctor said no -uh, you have one please find it so that you know it if you are in a relationship this is the week of discussion if you are married discuss this with your spouse say i didn't know that this trouble i've been making in this house is as a result of absence of meeting my love language i'll give you the love language again number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four quality time number five physical touch be honest between you and god write it don't show anybody it's none of your neighbor's business just write it write it and know it know it now so that you stop punishing the bro there are many of you that are always complaining the guy has done everything he knows to do you are saying he doesn't love you he doesn't know what to do again please tell him what your love language is it will help him to relate with you is someone learning something here maintaining relationships many homes are broken down because they do not know this look at me I once counseled a well a young pastor not not really a young pastor and of course i'm not mentioning names of ministries and all of that but i don't know what it was this guy just got married and he was very funny because it looked like all about their lives was ministry this guy can travel and not see the lady for months and i knew where he learned that from the lady was angry hallelujah but she didn't know how some ladies will not talk but he's eating them are you listening to me and that situation when i the guy was troubled and then i said okay let me can i talk with the lady i talked to her on phone this lady started crying and say she doesn't even trust the guy again she doesn't even know if the guy is sleeping around i just knew that her love language is quality time and this guy has not spent time with her brothers let me shock you if you don't spend time with a particular lady one day you will come and find your files and everything outside and she has already married another man they've given birth to children you don't know businessmen beware bishop gave us a story of of one man somewhere this guy was a billionaire he was obsessed about making money and he will not spend time with his wife we'll talk about maintaining marriages now that's where we we'll talk of sex marriage emotion spending time god and all of this when 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 you are not married we don't have anything to say about sex if you have been waiting for me to talk about sex you are wasting your time till we start talking about marriage marriage with a ring marriage with a ring
praise God. Say amen if you are getting blessed. If this thing is offending you, it's a sign that you may need to adjust some things. Don't get angry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because honestly, many of us are too loose. We have allowed a lot of things. There are many Christian relationships that they sleep with one another. They are happy. They don't think it's an issue. The brother showed the sister a nice scripture in the Bible. First Corinthians. Twisted the girl's head. I'm telling you now, get it straight. Sex is only, only, only for married people. I don't care what the Western world says. When we talk about marriage here, yeah, I'm going to tell you the spiritual implication of sex. We'll talk about it. You know us here, yeah, we don't have time for any stories to read. We don't teach, we're not teaching you biology. We're teaching you something that will help you in life. And so we'll say it as it is. Many of you think sex is just all about pleasure and emotional satisfaction. When I show you the spiritual side of sex, you will run away from any man who wants to sleep with you who is not your husband. Are you listening to me? God threatened me with that revelation. Threatened! When I had the revelation, I just said, ah, myself, behave. Joshua Selman, behave. In Jesus' name. Okay. are you learning something right now could this be the reason why many of you have entered over 10 relationships and they didn't work you are blaming any everybody could it be that you are the problem now are you now seeing 10 people cannot be wrong could it be that the problem is you before I round up we are going to talk about what I call the love and respect principle. Still talking about communication. The love and respect principle. Now, Dr. Emerson, please write it and look up. We finish with Gary Chapman. Dr. Emerson wrote something about love and respect. And he called it the crazy circle. Everybody say the crazy circle. Say one more time, the crazy circle. For the last time please let me have two people again at least ella come again and who when ella came out who came out oh yeah now oh, god you are doing as if come and stand to me ella and him you are married or you are going out hold your hands praise god what is the crazy circle this was the example he gave listen please listen they are celebrating their 10 years anniversary correct and this guy is busy so he looks at you know this kind of card that you don't you really don't see what they just write maybe something sweet and you know we men we, are, we can sometimes we, we are not thorough you just see the card ah, i like it so he bought the card he has been forgetting all the wedding anniversaries and she's hoping he will remember the 10th one are you getting my example so now the guy comes and gives her a surprise hold it honey i bought you this card now ella is smiling smile now don't, don't worry now she's smiling. Finally, she's interpreting this care and attention as what? Love. Is that correct? Then she opens the card only to find out that the guy bought a birthday card mistakenly. Please listen to my story. What did he buy? During an anniversary. Suddenly she looks at it. Bam! She drops it down and says, it was better you didn't buy the card what is she doing listen she has been compromised he, he has failed to interpret love so she feels the only way to know him make it to to make him know it is by being negative and hurting him are you following me now now the guy is angry because he interprets what she has done as disrespect are you following me now and he's saying can you not even appreciate the fact how many men can remember to buy an anniversary card? I bought you an anniversary card. If you talk to me like this again, I will slap you. Why? Now, he too is revenging. Dr. Emerson calls it the crazy cycle. Where a woman responds negatively to communicate her heart. And the man responds negatively too. 
Fire for fire ends two of you in ashes. Correct? This is the crazy cycle. Do you understand? I told you that ladies desire love, care, attention. Men desire what? Respect. Everybody say respect and honor. So, what the love and respect principle is the principle of communication in relationship and marriage that teaches you how to look beyond the acts of your spouse and see their heart. Are you following me now? Then you will be able to understand the craving that led to that activity that was done. Whether it was done well or not. Are you following me now? So let's, let's do it again. Now he gives her this. And then she collects it and opens and it's a birthday gift. And she's like, wow honey, I, I want to appreciate you. And she laughs and jokingly says, Ogasa, do you know you bought me a birthday gift? Say, Tom, but at least you tried. If you remember this, ne this year, next year you'll be meticulous. Now what happens? She's sad. But she found out that dishonoring him will complicate the issue. Are you following me now? So in that honor, the guy now feels bad because she has honored him. And he will now say, do you know what? We are going out this night. Even the devil will not stop us. I must make this up because she has honored him. Are you following me? We call it the love and respect principle. There are some ladies whose marriages and relationship will never work until they learn this. Look up. Ladies, look up. No matter what enters you, don't ever get so wild and angry that you start insulting a guy and washing him down and giving it to him. Ladies, call it giving it to him. You give it to him. See, I washed him from head and washed. I gave it to him. He knew that. I've been watching him. You are laughing. Let me tell you something. No matter how beautiful you are, your beauty will fade like a leaf. The guy will hate you forever. Are you, are, you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't try to embarrass a guy. You went to Suya joint. Ogagambo is here. You are going to buy Suya. And of course, the guy wants to behave. So he'll say, um, you know, Ella, just speak for us. A wise lady will honor him back. You don't want to disgrace him. You know, based on your relationship, you can be free to say some things. Even if he's joking, how much oil should I pick? Oh, not you just start laughing and say, hey, Ogaga, how much? 50 naira, how much? 100 naira, how much? 200. You say, put five of this one. And all the guy has is 500. Now, this guy is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking around if you see any of his friends. You say, do you mind, mommy? I, I eat three. Three will be okay for me. How about you? You say, Oga Gambo, just put two more. The guy is fidgeting. So his response is, he's just saying, put more. He already knows that this thing is a mess. There's no honor there. Hallelujah. And at the end, the guy suddenly looks at you and says, look, sweetheart, let me just tell you, I came with only 500. Why didn't you tell me? What kind of thing is this? When you are not ready, don't say, did I ask you for it? Did I ask you for it? Please, in fact, I'm even going. The friend will say, no, no, come. And that's how you, you go to the hostel. Let me tell you something. You broke the love and respect principle. You embarrassed the guy there. Washed him there. You were happy. You entered your room boiling. And your roommates had to tell you, calm down. Can you imagine? And you are saying he embarrassed you. You didn't look at his sincere efforts. Are you following me now? Listen, God is speaking to some of you here. You need to change it. You have been breaking the love, respect circle. And there are some of you brothers. You must be careful. Hallelujah. I've said it here. Don't put too much culture inside your relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lady just comes and says, Hi, how are you, Elijah? And you're like, Ah, Ella, see, look at me. I'm from a royal family, one. Number two, I'm older than you. Something that is supposed to be obvious. Even my sisters kneel down to greet me. See, don't, don't think just because I asked you out to you, we did all these things. Let me tell you, 
I can leave this relationship and I will sleep fine. This nonsense the brother is saying now is called breaking the, the, the love respect circle. Are you hearing me? Don't do that. So, when there is love from this side, there is what? The Bible says, Proverbs 24, we are rounding up. Proverbs 24 verse 3. Let's look at it quickly. Proverbs 24 verse 3. From Amplified. Is it possible to get it Amplified? Amplified. Please project it. I want you to read it. We are going to pray. The devil is a liar in Jesus' name. That devil that wants to destroy relationships and marriage, we will cast it out this night in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, my marriage must work. Say it, it must work in Jesus' name. Alright, everybody, let's read. One, to read. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established upon a sound and good foundation. He said, true skillful and godly wisdom is what? So if you understand the principles, God is speaking. There are some of you that God stopped from entering relationships so that you can understand this. Hallelujah. The greatest craving for a lady is the craving to be loved. Brothers, say it after me. The greatest craving for a lady is to be loved, to be cared for, to be protected. Ladies, say after me, the greatest desire for a man is to be respected, to be honored. Now, just stop playing one minute. In what way have you been dishonoring the men around you? Ladies, this is a time for soul searching. We're rounding up. In what way? In what way? I stop the keyboard playing so that you will listen carefully. There are many of us that you need to change your attitude. Are you following me now? You need to what? Change your attitude. I want all the ladies in Koinonia to treat the brothers with respect and dignity. It doesn't matter if the guy is older than you or you are older than the person. Treat them well. Are you listening to me? What did I say? Treat them well. Don't treat the blooders like rags. If you've been doing it, stop it. Because do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he will reap. One day they will treat you like rags. Treat the brothers with respect. When you see them, greet them. Be smart. Don't think it is weakness. Many of you have been taught... You think he's being cheap. You are being virtuous. Are you following me? You are not being cheap for God's sake. You are being virtuous. Brothers, let me never see you shouting, insulting, embarrassing, boiling at any lady. You are struggling for seat with her. He said, all I know is that me Except you cut these two legs. You can do all your thing. You know? I must sit down here. And the lady is looking very helpless. You are bullying her. Hallelujah. Brothers, you should protect our sisters for us. I've said it here. Brothers, behold your wives. Sisters, behold your husbands. It's not a lie. Huh? It's not a lie. It will happen. It's happening. It will keep happening. So treat them well. The person you may be treating with this day now may be your husband. True, true. Treat them well. Hallelujah. Don't gauge people and say, Kai, the way this brother is dressed himself now, wow. You don't merit my respect. When you look at the brothers, you look at them, say, mm, this guy babs well, he's nice, he's not pouring saliva at me anyhow. I will respect him. But the brother that is coming, praise and worship, you are just shouting and pouring saliva at me. Say, brother, now what about me? Kilo Shele, what is wrong? <laughs> are you the only one in Koinonia? Are you the only one who can call upon the name of the Lord?
Ladies, lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I honor my husband. I respect my husband. In the name of Jesus. And say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. And I respect them. Please put down your hands. God bless you. Guys, lift your hands. Lift two of your hands. <laughs> Please do it. Lift two. Aside, no, if you are not my... Sir, no. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm a caring brother. Say it. I'm a caring brother. I'm a loving brother. What, what else? I mean, what? I'm a... I'm a responsible brother. I'm a visionary brother. Say it again. I care for my wife. I protect her. I take her seriously. I pay the price to be committed. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Yeah. That's very, very good. If you do that, you will find out that you can enter a relationship and I won't promise you a smooth sail, but you see, at every juncture, things can be managed. Is someone learning something tonight? We are going to pray. We have three prayer points tonight. Before we stand up, listen. The first prayer point is you are going to pray for humility. There are some of you that this teaching tonight stung you in a way that you are still angry with me now because it changed your ideologies there are ladies that believe you are too hot too attractive to respect any man let me tell you now straight to the point somebody is better than you period there are some guys that think you are too much of a celebrity you are a hot cake everybody talks about you you are the guy. Let me announce to you now. Stop dreaming. Stop what? Dreaming. Because there are 3,000 other prophets who have not bowed to Baal. And God can replace any arrogant man and any arrogant lady. Praise the Lord. Some of you, the way you are behaving, you are telling God you don't want to marry because you are not ready to listen to the rules and comply we are going to pray next week i'm going to we are going to be discussing don't miss next week meeting it's going to be a serious it's going to be war against delay and all of these satanic things i'm going to be teaching you a lot of spiritual mysteries you'll be seeing the reason behind delay and all of these things because there are some of you who are standing in for your family members and your loved ones some of you have done all these things that we're saying, but things are not working. We'll be examining it tomorrow. Are you ready to pray? Stand up on your feet. Bless you. Now, look up. How many people did I bring out here? Where are they? Four of you. Huh? We're going to give you lunch tomorrow. I didn't say you are in a relationship. It's, it's our appreciation. Four of you. Huh? Four of you. You'll go for lunch tomorrow. Hallelujah. Next time when we're giving example, run and come out. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Listen. You're going to pray and say, Lord, whatever needs to be changed in me, please humble yourself. Whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you are in a relationship or not, humble yourself and cry to God and say, Lord, there are some things in me. There are some mindsets and ideologies that I've been having. But from this night's teaching, I've seen that I need to change. Lift your voice and cry. Cry to God. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I repent from pride and arrogance. I repent from having a wrong attitude a wrong attitude 
about relationship a wrong attitude about marriage make sure you are praying but lord i hear your voice tonight thank you for preparing me pray say lord change me walk on me make me a woman of virtue as i am right now i'm not yet fit to be a woman of virtue i humble myself change me don't be arrogant tonight don't be arrogant tonight humble yourself and pray say lord i've tried but you need to work on me hallelujah 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 now please pair yourselves into two you are going to pray for the brother or the sister you are holding if you can if you cannot no problem hallelujah listen second prayer point you are going to pray hallelujah and you are going to say every mindset that is in that brother or that there are some of us there are strongholds some of us are stubborn even after this teaching you will live angry and you will live offended rather than allowing the teaching to get inside you hallelujah you are going to pray for your neighbor and say lord please break this person we want excellent wives we want visionary men pray for the person lord walk on my sister walk on my brother in the name of the lord jesus break every pride break every wrong mindset let our sisters become women of virtue women of virtue women of virtue excellent women award-winning women pray for the brothers let our men become responsible men of integrity men of stature men of grace pray for her say lord let the spirit of respect let the spirit of honor come upon my sister grace to respect men grace to respect your husband grace to respect your husband hallelujah hallelujah please you can leave the person the final prayer point this night listen listen we're going to pray for purity in our relationships did you hear that if you've been involved in anything that you know you have crossed boundaries don't feel bad we don't condemn you this is a family are you hearing me this is a family there is always a new beginning are you hearing what i'm saying but you're going to make a decision make a decision with god and say i'm going to keep my relationship pure if you are married say i'm going to keep my marriage pure no unfaithfulness no infidelity lift your voice and pray grace for purity please take it serious pray you've been involved in any kind of ungodly lifestyle or practice please pray say lord i receive grace grace ladies pray and say no man who is not your husband will see your nakedness make a commitment with god make a commitment it is worth it it is worth it it may look unusual but i tell you it is worth it it will bring the anointing of god to your life it will bring the glory of god to your life it will bring the fire of god to your life purity who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place lord let us have pure relationships holy relationships pure relationships 
relationships that we will be proud of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We taught on emotional. Don't just let your emotions. Listen. There are many relationships right now. And many marriages and homes that are at the verge of breaking. They think it's Satan because that tingly thing is not there. I bring you a word right now. You know that every home is built by commitment. Are you listening to me? Emotions are good, but it's not enough to keep and sustain a home. If you commit yourself when you feel emotionally high and then retract it when it's down, you are not going to have a stable marriage. Your spouse will annoy you. There are times you will be offended, but you must make up your mind that you are committed. It's better to leave the relationship for marriage, we don't believe in divorce. We're going to talk about that next week. Divorce, different things. Let me tell you something. Listen. Look at me. I'm saying it honestly. Listen. If you are in this place and you are in a relationship, if you know you are not going to be committed, please let the brother or let the sister go in peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? Sisters, there is no putting leg, one leg here. And you are raising the brother's hopes, making him feel that he's all in all for you. Meanwhile, the real person you are looking at is in rivers. You are just saying whoever among them starts talking about marriage. This is ungodly. Let me tell you. I've said it for years. We don't believe in double dating. Double dating is not Christian. If you feel you have a problem with your relationship, there are ministers around. Hallelujah. We have elderly people around that can counsel. By the time we talk with you and we see that, oh, there is a compromise. Truly, we see that based on the compromise, this relationship may not work. Listen, as Christians, if there is need to end relationships, we end relationships, not break them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You break relationships and break people's hearts. Next week we are going to discuss. There are people who have started relationships and eventually they saw that, okay, an encounter with the word releases something. People just read a book, right? And something comes upon them they cannot explain. All of a sudden they come out and you are drawn to withdraw money and give them. Just like that. All of a sudden you stand up and begin to advocate their case. What, what sort of life is that? Look, they that know their God, they are the ones who will be strong. It's not about age. Listen, it's not, it's not even entirely just about education and I have a great deal for academia and, and all of that, but let me tell you, there is a reality that predates our existence and if you do not know it, you will be a victim in this life psalm 82 from verse 5 the bible says they know not neither will they understand i have spent my life studying the laws of the spirit i have literally committed my life to explore these ancient mysteries what was the secret of ancient men what made them mighty what made them great and i found out that every mighty man then and now stands upon a spiritual advantage there is a pedestal in the spirit that sponsors their audacity is someone hearing what i'm saying you don't just tell somebody be healed and he gets healed brothers and sisters human beings are not idiots are you hearing what i'm saying i can't just look at this lady and say your story will change and then it changes come on i prophesy as I was commanded. I prophesy as I was commanded. See, this is the dynamics of miracles. I'm explaining to you the inner workings of the miraculous. It happens because all that you see is not all that there is. 
This realm is a three-dimensional realm, physics tells us, and is limited. The realm of the spirit has other dimensions, meaning there are other possibilities beyond the scope of our intellect. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. This is the realm of wisdom that kings reign by. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. He said, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Tonight is not just for you to receive a miracle, but to empower you. That when you make a statement, there is an understanding that forces that statement to come to pass. Hallelujah. When you talk to people about finances, the first idea that comes to their mind is business. Is that not true? What business? Okay, real estate. Okay, stocks. Okay, this and that. I've said it again and again. Again and again. That I don't care what business you do or what job you are having. You will struggle forever until there is a spiritual factor that is at work. Are you getting me? Yes. The Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One. He said that unction can teach you. Isaiah 48 from verse 17. He says, I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. There is an anointing. This hit and run trial and error life must end tonight. We can walk circumspectly on the strength. Listen, you can be 70 years old and have an error about life for that long. Are you getting me? A whole nation can be wrong. Our society, we transfer knowledge upon the strength of what we know or what we have been told. When man ran away from God, he said, Adam, where are thou? Genesis 3. He says, the Lord had the talking spirit, the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? Meaning your life is a summation of the informations you have gotten and you have believed. But could it be that what you have held as truth all your life may not necessarily be accurate? Taught by well-meaning people, there is the life of the kingdom and there is the life of this world system, cosmos. We are not the same. It says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. There is a plane of reality you must function for. Hallelujah. So number one, an encounter with the word. You need an encounter with the word. The word of God does three things among many other things. Please write. Number one, the word of God shows you the basis upon which you will receive any promise. The word of God shows you the basis the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Everybody say legal realm. So you don't just, you can play crooks in the earth realm here, but not in the realm of the spirit. Everything is done legally and legitimately. If you ever see anything manifest itself, certain laws were applied. Praise the Lord. So the word of God shows you the basis Remember in our, our series, uh, the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I teach about the spiritual dimension of life. That there are gates on every mountain. Everybody say there are gates on every mountain. When you get to that mountain of breakthrough, there are gates. It will not just open because you are a Christian. When Jesus in Psalm 24 was about to come out from the grave, the Bible says there were gates. The psalmist saw it. I said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Did they open? No, sir. They asked a question, who is this king of glory? Give us the basis of your audacity. Upon what are you standing? And he says, he is the Lord, strong and mighty. The one who just defeated darkness. And the gates opened. So when you stand to receive the miracle, oh God, change my story from SS to AA. There will be a question in the spirit upon what strength that's the parable that jesus was giving the parable 
right of two men who built houses one upon sand the other upon a rock two houses were built but what supported them became the distinguishing factor praise the lord the basis it's important for you to know the basis let me tell you very straight and uh, in a in a way that does not require any confusion everybody writes the finished work of christ this is the basis this is the reason it is the one master factor the finished work of christ i love jesus i love jesus many of us need to meditate on what he really did for us do you know that it is on the strength of what happened on the cross the way access the veil has been torn and it's given us access access revelations 5 revelations 5 verse 9 very quickly please let's hurry up so that we can do much tonight revelations 5 and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof it says for thou was slain and you have redeemed us unto god how by thy blood that's the basis the substitutionary work of christ i told you you can get our teaching the speaking blood i told you blood is a key in the spirit is that true blood is a key in the spirit everybody's blood can open certain doors but not every door that's why when you go to a herbalist he will he will calculate by divination and tell you the kind of blood that will open the gate you want so the blood of jesus is the greatest because it is the master key there is no door that it cannot open it says out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation verse 10 It says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. And as a result, we shall reign. Everybody say dominion. He has given us access to dominion. Access to dominion. Praise the Lord. So when you study the word of God, it gives you the basis. So when you stand and say, I'm tired of this cancer. Or I'm tired of this barrenness. It's been five years have not been able to take in the realm of the spirit will ask you so upon what now do you believe you will take in and you tell them there is a key that has opened that door there is a key the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah everybody say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance one more time say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance you're not just saying it after me you are confessing say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance hallelujah that's the reason why you get married that's the reason why the devil must leave tonight that's the reason why the genotype must change that's the reason why every prophetic word that comes upon you must produce result. That's the reason why as many of you standing outside, although you are far, but the ministry of that blood can still speak. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Not just because preachers said the blood is powerful. I have a revelation of the significance of the blood. Revelation is powerful. It produces true faith in your spirit. So that you are not believing blindly. You are believing upon the strength of an understanding. So the blood of Jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs. And when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell. You don't stand weak. And you are wondering and say, do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier? You say, well, I couldn't cross it, but that blood created a divide and I must walk past it. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me show you something. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah. 
Isaiah, help me, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 41, verse 21. I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you. Justify your qualification to step into a new level. You don't say that just by jacking yourself. You lift up the blood and say, this is my basis. This is my basis. Upon the strength of what your son did, he has given me access to health. He has given me access to the blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Number two, an encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and transformation. Somebody come. Please look for that scripture for me. With God, all things are possible. Right? Somebody come, anybody. Watch this. An encounter with the word of God. Remember I told you in our teaching yes, um, last week, right? The reality of what? Spiritual laws. I told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must work with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew, Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset right he says as far as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts my ways is that true so this is god standing and he's saying come and join me but she's standing here and saying lord i need you to help me and god is saying it's against the law you have to find come i supply grace you take advantage of that grace and come when we are together so the bible says with god come with God all things become possible so without God nothing becomes possible so that cancer with God becomes possible you see that are you getting my point that admission with God the Bible says with God so koinonia miracle service with God will produce result the, 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 this is the mystery this is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. But when the word of God begins to judge you. It shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here 
with certain terminal diseases and they have been told they've lived all their lives believing they didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed they came for something else right because according to their mind it has not yet become a possibility that god can address that issue but when he looked at the tomb where lazarus had been buried he said roll away the stone proof that i can raise lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed praise the lord i believe god i'm a believer i truly believe him proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says trust in the lord with all your heart it says lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways not some it didn't say talk to him it says acknowledge him you acknowledge a man by giving him preference he says and as a result he will direct your path next verse says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil." hallelujah very important so with god this lady may be weak unable to do anything but with god with god she may be broke suffering nothing is working but all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. She begins to learn the ways of God that he can open up the heavens. That it is the blessing of the Lord. Not your business. It is the blessing. The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth prospers. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God listen to me tonight the first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say Lord I'm tired because your life is a reflection of your ideologies I don't care what the situation is I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what your belief system and your ideology he said let this mind Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind the word let there is permit permit this mind please i know that you came from kaduna state and kaduna state there may be a way you thought about in your village i know that you came from from the east and there is a way that they thought i know that you come from the west i know that you come from katsina tonight will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom by adopting the ideologies of the king subscribe to a new government every government has an economic system every government has a political system every government has a welfare system if you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father but that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom hallelujah the word of God brings you into alignment. Listen, when I begin to study the word of God, or when she begins to study the word of God, and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of God, you will be foolish to argue with the word of God. The word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming, this is Koinonia. Get the series. Hallelujah. That there, there is a lot of creation. Genesis 1, uh, Isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created. Praise the Lord. The question I'm asking you is, I know you want God to bless you, but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village? Is the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold. The Bible says... That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds. Casting down every yazar, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So, we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa. We have been taught that until you are 25 or 30, don't think about finances. Don't think about blessing. Don't think about empowerment. And you are told that you are too young to carry the power of God. Or you are a lady. You shouldn't carry the power of God. These are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us. But you must refuse it. Say, I refuse. Shout it, I refuse. Mm. You must refuse it. You must refuse it. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? I honor the doctors, but do you know that there are many people who are, who have several sicknesses, but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it. You went to check headache. They said, my brother, this thing is more than headache. You mean you would have died now? We have a lot of doctors here. Doctors, I love you. Praise the Lord. But now when you check and they tell you, huh, do you know that your liver is almost, in fact, you say, you, you mean it? Hi! From that time, your liver starts paining you physically. Right? And then the doctor tells you, you have two weeks to live. All of a sudden, somebody says, there's an opportunity. God is lifting us. They let him lift you there. I'm dying. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of God. See, listen. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. There is a spiritual agency for sight. You only see through these physical eyes. It's not what you see with. They are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see. And Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light. Praise the Lord. So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. Do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai! A, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation. Go and bring Baal. Make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please, make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is. I refuse to limit you. Number three, the word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Isaiah 1.19 If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of your the land not if ye be hungry and desperate if ye be what willing and obedient there is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of God's prosperity package Lord you want to bless me what is my role right I want to step into levels of the anointing. The word of God shows me. is See, reading the word is like walking in your promised land. It says walk left and right. See everything as far as your eyes have seen. So, read, studying the word of God is like 
touring your promised land and you come back and say lord as i read i found this and that and god says all right here's the condition everything is yours for a taking you can enter a restaurant immediately you enter the restaurant you see a lap of an agri chicken and you start smiling but you came there with 100 naira there is a condition you want to be a possessor you want to make that thing become a present reality there is a price tag nobody stops you there's no policeman to stop you but you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch right and nothing happens you may be 30 years but a little baby will come with his father and he say, Mommy, I like this. And whatever he likes, keep giving it to him. The container did not refuse to open. Your part. I know you are laughing because I spoke about food, but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food. Praise God. Oh God, change my story. God says, come, let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. You have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life, making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis you have you have always every power challenging me you better leave because of what why should they leave do you know what brought them in the first place they were there before you were born so i came to koinonia every demon i'm tired of you and that's not what drives them you, you don't they don't go because you are tired 38 years that man was lying down at a pool that wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38, oh yeah, let me allow you, you have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes. Five minutes. Meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow, you are wasting your time. Arise and shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. Isaiah 64, thy light is come. Hmm. Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here, what you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are prayed. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I had Ren had Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it until i found out that blood was a key in the spirit that's why every religion has blood as part of their component this is the one factor that every religion agrees upon blood hallelujah and there are some of us here the problem is our mindset god wants to bless us he wants to lift us but there is a mindset oh i'm a lady oh i'm coming from so so and so i cannot even speak english Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Or, I made that and that. Huh? Or, God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You are asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle, or the second 
platform now first is an encounter with the word of god second is the ministry of prayer the ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle there must be the ministry of prayer it does two things number one prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life ephesians 6 verse 12 the bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world we have strangers who are trying to escort us every day every time wicked spirits stratified in different cadres right so you are always not alone the devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giant but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in heavenly places the stratification of the demonic kingdom so between you and your breakthrough there are giants it takes the ministry of prayer hallelujah when you pray you authorize heaven to look into your situation because god is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to genesis 1 26 from the day he said let them have dominion but god is supposed to know now doesn't he love me well it will not change the bones kept staring at ezekiel until something happened praise the lord you come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this there are still people seated oppressed of demons right some of these demons are hearing what i'm saying now they are just shaking but they are not going yet let's see if we will go must we really go yes by the time we begin to pray we activate the energy the force right it's a force of compliance it brings everything to the obedience of christ so that's why you need to pray you pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow number two this is an even greater reason why we pray prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation please never forget this when you pray in the place of prayer god reveals to you his unique strategy for you so you have walked through scripture and you have seen that god has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough but now the bible may not give you the nitty gritty of what to do in your unique situation prayer when you begin to pray the spirit of god begins to search the mind of god concerning your situation and the bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of god so you begin to pray and then the lord tells you okay now this is the strategy you are going to meet benga benga will introduce you to femi and femi will introduce you to prof that's how the miracle will come it is a strategy for only you somebody will do it and fail are you seeing why prayer is powerful this is this is am i blessing you in my opinion i think this is already a miracle for somebody i'm showing you the loopholes some of us have seen the promise you have agreed with god but the problem is the strategy in ancient times kings won war not on the strength of their army but the dexterity of their strategy 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 so joshua stood still and god began to give him the strategy he said joshua this is how we we'll throw this wall down walk around seven times did you ever see that repeated in the bible because it was a strategy right he told gideon take the people by the riverside and let them take water study the way they take water you will use it as a separation strategy somebody has come tonight to receive strategy lord how do i complete this house you calculated your salary based on your salary to take 10 years and god says i can show you a strategy 
the Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it, and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that I've been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It is all about strategy, I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense, but is his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail, but it's what you will do and you will walk on. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh -uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him, but he needed a strategy. Right? That's why every time kings would fight, they would go and inquire, what is the strategy for this war? They will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war. They will fail woefully. And so they will go, should I pursue? And the Lord will say, this is how it will happen. Like in the days of Jehoshaphat. Put worshippers in front. Other times he said, walk around seven times. Other times he said, just be still. Get a stone and sit down and watch what I will do. Strategy. Question. The strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. Just like that. The Bible says, as they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. If they were to choose, they would have carried somebody else. Right now, when we begin to pray, I am convinced that God will begin to reveal strategies for people. Hmm. Strategies on how to make the rain work. Some of you, listen, students, there are students here that all you need is one strategy. There is a course, everybody has told you this course, and you are face to face with that Goliath. You've been running away, but right, you are there now. You need a strategy. Hallelujah. There are some of you, maybe your project, a supervisor may be difficult and God can give you a strategy. The strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit. It can be light. A one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying. Oh God, what do I do about this, my supervisor? Suddenly a scripture comes. The gift of a man makes room. You quickly go and package wine. Not to bribe the man. You are responding to a strategy. Ordinarily, he would have thrown you out with your wine. But because you are doing it as a strategy. You will laugh and say, why did you have to do that? What is even your name? You have been disturbing me. It's a strategy. Hmm. Lord, give me strategy. You will see men do foolish things that don't make sense. That's what God told us. When, when we wanted to start giving access to our messages, I went to the Lord and the Lord told me, He said, make sure you do not sell any message. Keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you would but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave and this is the mystery behind what you see. I'd like you, as you are seated, before we stand up to pray, in one minute speak to the Lord. What is the strategy? Lord, my family has been struggling over this issue for years. Every time they want to build, there is no money. What is the strategy? Please take what I'm saying seriously. One strategy can change your situation. Not just a strategy you read from a book. One strategy. There is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours, by the strategy of the Spirit, He gave victory. Please pray. God has shown you your destiny helper. But he's not paying attention to you. One strategy will answer the question. Pray.
God has shown you the business he wants you to do. But as it is, you try and try. You need strategy. It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level, 200 level. By 300 level, you started moving back because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty to show you strategy 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 please pray for your ministry sister you don't need all the money you think you need what you need is a strategy from the spirit believe me you have tried every idea you know you have tried everything they have told you. Why don't you cry before God? Come on now, pray. Koinonia. Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed, but my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? Lord, I've applied for job everywhere. Civil defense, immigration, everywhere. What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit. There are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now. But fear has stopped them from taking action. There are many families you would have finished building your house since. Not just a bungalow that will kill you. There are people seated here. If you took the step God told you last year, you would have been feeding your family this year. Fear. Tonight, I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children, fear. Adults, fear. Great men, fear. Macho men, fear intelligent people fear right now africa is afraid nigeria is afraid many people are afraid the dollar is crashing everybody is afraid you don't know what to do right there's fear everywhere when the devil when god tells you get up and build the house this year that house must be built and all you have is hundred thousand and you calculate and you find out that the building will cost seven million and you are laughing you say god don't disgrace me let the people in the village not say i'm stupid take action listen the bible says this sign shall follow not go before you will never see the hand of god till you stand up and move this is somebody's this is a word from god to someone you have refused to move fear you wrote jam nine times you didn't get it god is saying this time you will get it you say i'm not ready i better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money see that fear are we getting blessed? Let's look at two scriptures. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. Take it high, please. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. Please help us, media. Let's really hurry up. We have to hurry up. Because we have some prayer to do. Are you seeing the things that are limiting us? Truly, I am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony. If nothing changes in your life this year, then it's your fault. 
but as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain by the grace of God I will do my best for God had not given us the spirit of fear put your name there just that first clause one to read one more time praise the Lord there are many of our loved ones 45 years brother are you ready to get out of your father's house i preached a message in 2008 it was a classic come out of your father's house thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone there are some of us 30 35 40 who are still a big liability to our parents at home or god come out to say what i have now is twenty thousand. come out you have prayed you have fasted you have sown seeds you are giving look let me tell you if i am a father my when my child gets to a certain age one day you will just come and say young man in the name of jesus i release the blessing upon you go out out that's it i'm i'm very serious see you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year it's not just to say it's the year of the rain stand up and take action are you hearing what i'm saying change change what you have been doing kill fear take action and die doing it queen esther god took her to the palace god removed vashti and brought her for the salvation of israel but when mordecai spoke to her her man is plotting against these people you better go and meet the king she said ah please oh me too is 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 bring they brought me here please i'm not ready to face any embarrassment and mordecai said sit down there in fear paraphrasing sit down there when they finish with us the jews they will now say all of you in this palace bring your bio data and they will find out you are a jew too and they will kill you and she said if i perish i perish this is the year some of us are going to say if i i'm writing that jam again is god speaking to somebody I'm writing that jam again. This is the year. But I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how do you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I was going to get married. The person even did introduction. Later he called and he said he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise you sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? more people die there are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry is that true what you are afraid of has not happened but you are you are almost dying from today now people have started running out of zaria for instance you can go if you want to go what I, <laughs> of course i'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around but, but oh, come on now people fear everything you are sleeping in the night. You just light. Maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way. Say, I, I don't like the way this cloth. Why is it tilting and coming back? Who is there? <laughs> Fear. Fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no. And they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself. Fear. One of my friend's father. Listen, true story one of my friend's father they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in nigeria when god gave him that idea it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship right the idea came and he laughed thai water Haba. who will pay for water are we idiots there is stream there is sun there's light there's stove to warm water and he refused to take action and certain people took action do you think those who took the action are, are crying now this year you must take a handkerchief as you are crying be moving are you getting my point you must challenge that devil 
you have not broken through certain barriers nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family now you finish secondary school for instance and you're about to take that step and, and everybody said just you have tried you got diploma in, in in software application are you not okay you are ahead yet every time you sleep you see a phd and the devil is telling you cannot move tonight we have come to call that devil a liar in the name of jesus christ say i will take action say i will take action that's right the second thing that stops action is laziness everybody say laziness my goodness our time is gone laziness very important proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 please proverbs 10 verse 4 and then later on we would look at proverbs 22 verse 13 media please don't forget proverbs 10 verse 4 there are some of us the demon that needs to fly out of our life today not jump out fly out and never return is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward some of us sheer laziness the bible says he become poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy i have zero tolerance for lazy people a young man of 30 years by 11 30 12 he's still snoring on the bed you will beg for bread for sure there is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it there are many lazy people we like a wolf free things look let me tell you there is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year are we getting blessed he become a poor that deals with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent does what there are some of you you are experts at begging day and night you beg everybody right please bros i beg you get 5k help me next time sister sorry i'm just knowing you don't be embarrassed i need 2k you you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness there are grasses in people's houses to go and weed there are things to do but you get up and believe you're a big boy. Big boy with nothing in your pocket. You calm down. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? You must reject laziness. There are some students. You see how some students live. You think, you think that they are professors. Right? 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap he will turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry tall dark and handsome he must be a millionaire you think god doesn't have sense he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows there are many people see look let me tell you sometimes you may see me you see some of the things we are doing and you just don't be deceived by this this ever water if you want it come and carry it there is it there is more than this are you getting my point first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving for katsina it takes work it's not just anointing it takes diligence please you need to talk to yourself and say this year the spirit of laziness i curse you out of my life curse you out of my life an assignment you can do now you sit down and say i will do it on wednesday you get zero right another assignment you get zero they just they they solve a question in class they say just copy it and get 10 marks say i will do it later on look procrastination you must attack it this year hallelujah you are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here it's no guarantee to be lazy i will fire you i employ you you are not doing what i employ in the name of jesus i will fire you and you will come back and you will hear me preach absolutely absolutely 
there is truly no food for a lazy man let me tell you the truth you must get up and and be serious about your destiny and work there are some of us this year you have no business with relationship if you are passing and you see any beautiful lady just say blood of jesus and pass because this year is a year to you your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up no responsible parent will give her daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going are you hearing what i'm saying very important but i believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service it's going to be a very fast walk for me i think this this is it happening to you if if we close right now i believe that you would have left with something many of us here belong to this category this laziness category right because social media facebook twitter has and 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 bbm has massaged our life of laziness something you can get up and do you see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other you are taking a bike huh? laziness it's not like you're in a hurry for anything you just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon you are not working you are not doing anything you're a liability to everybody around you and you are just you are you are sending yarrow boys as a student for instance to go and buy you mr biggs four five thousand they bring everything you lie down with phone that you forced out of your father or mother and you are making calls in the daytime even a worker is not doing that you ping your life out and the person you are pinging is in the office making money you are there struggling the day you call him he stops responding to you please don't be a liability to anybody this year whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest rise up and begin to be hard working and you will become friends again are you hearing what i'm saying especially for the brothers brothers say amen. amen let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying this year please please something must change there are some people sir five years six years no job not because they they have never taken their cv anywhere um, but my uncle said it now that uncle said it's wicked You came to stay in your friend's house. When you stayed in his house, he was a student. He graduated, served, and is working. You are still staying in his house. He has gotten a job. You are still staying in his house. Whoever that friend is, drive that person out. After miracle service, tell him in the name of Jesus Christ, I appreciate you. Three years is enough time for you to sit down. Get Koinonia messages 2012, 13, 14. It will liberate you. Please, out of my house. Sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough over pampering destroys hallelujah over pampering destroys there are times you need to get up and challenge yourself they send you money in two weeks you're already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur Huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense that's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point you must change this year in the name of jesus christ fear and laziness we are going to pray three serious prayer points the moment we pray these three prayer points the night will start with the sick people we we'll start ministering to the sick people as soon as we pray the three prayer points please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister those outside can you shout hallelujah one more time shout hallelujah the Lord will visit you in a mighty way in Jesus name praise the Lord rise up on your feet and let's pray success is not automatic there are laws there are laws this is our year of the rain God has spoken to us shown us the loopholes 
Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your hands inside and outside. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this word. It has come to clean me up. It has come to purify me. It has come to challenge me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you believe it. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to align my mindset to that of the word of God. Every thinking pattern, every thought process that is not of God, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, give me the mindset of victory. I'm tired of carrying ideologies some of us have ideologies about church we have ideologies about praying in tongues ideologies about the holy spirit ideologies about prosperity ideologies about miracles ideologies about responsibility about marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of god the first miracle tonight is to pray i submit my mentality i submit my thought pattern please pray pray from your heart i refuse to be limited there is still a place for champions in life there is still a place for the great but you can never rise above your thought pattern you can never rise above your ideology you may have held on to it for years it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to re-examine your mindset let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus the mindset of victory I don't see defeat in my life I don't see defeat with God I am unlimited with God I am unbeatable with God, I am a champion. Ay, 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 ay. Pray, rejoice not over me, my enemies. For though I fall, yet I will rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to challenge that spirit of laziness are you getting my point fear and laziness let's combine it together say after me in the name of Jesus I challenge every spirit of fear for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore I declare that fear is banished from my life I refuse to fear and I challenge laziness from today I receive the grace to be diligent no more laziness it's time to take action lift your voice and begin to pray time to take action 2015 time to take financial steps 2015 time to take spiritual steps 2015 
time to take intellectual steps. Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God mighty way that's right as we pray this very prayer point the healing power of god will begin to move hallelujah i'm going to request those who are sick those who came specifically for healing you will find your way as hold on let's pray first before you come i'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of jesus Oh God, reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing. Reveal to me the strategy in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny helpers. Show me the strategy for the church growth. Show me the strategy for the expansion of my business. Show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jam show me the strategy hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy Oh yes, the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We're going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here. Very quickly. If you came here for the miracle service for healing, 
please come and line up ushers help them coordinate them let's have it very quickly while that is happening make sure you write your request there is a mystery of answered prayer in this house make sure please if you have not written your prayer request start writing it i don't care what the situation is i like you to write it and let's drop it before god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh mighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh, my God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh, my God. You are. hallelujah those of you in front i know you came here because of the testimonies you have had i want you to know that your situation will not be different are you hearing what i'm saying i want you to believe in the power of god there are certain conditions listen to me there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic hallelujah it's going to be a fast one i don't know if we'll have time to take testimonies or not but because there, I, I really, I really, really need to rush with time and let's do a lot. Please, if we end late today, I apologize in advance. We'll do our best to kill time. But please, wait because God has something to do in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. It's called a miracle service. We thank you for the anointing of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Everybody, make sure you participate. Now, if, there are, if you have loved ones who are sick, you can connect. You can tell them to connect. Praise the Lord. You don't need to come out for them, but you can call them or do whatever and tell them, look, connect to what God is doing. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Worship team, help us. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you all the praise. And we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, please. Who brought this lady? Who brought this lady? Who came with her, please? If you brought somebody, let's know. Please, we are not faking it here. What's, what's wrong with her legs? Who brought her? My dear, look at me. What's wrong with your leg? Huh? You what? There is a wound in my leg. My leg is swollen. Your leg is swollen. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing a charm. Look at me. What, what did you say? You sat in what? I woke up. So you woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I can walk for long. Okay, look at I me. Keep coming out look at me. Pause. It's coming out with pus. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship him. Please, let's hurry.
Tell, you are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Said I have been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? Yes, he hearing. Okay. You Bless you, Daddy. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Mm. Sir, what what are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. My belly was swelling. Okay. Mm. I'm going to pray for you okay. right now. Mm. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus, the heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um, would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay, just just try. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go. Ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. as I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I curse this power. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Climb by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it which of the hands can she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. My mind is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come, I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are the sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. 
release you from this act of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage her leg. Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change in Jesus' name. My God is awesome. He's awesome. My God is awesome. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. I see He's awesome. My God is awesome. Father, careful. Although there is an iron in your leg, in the name of Jesus, may there be a miracle. I command this shorter leg to grow out now by the Spirit of God. Madam, look at me. Do you want to try walking? Uh -uh. I'm not asking you. What you, have. you came here because you believe God can help you. Is that true? You believe that? Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? You are sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree. That as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains, um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. We're going to cause every wicked power. Please listen. Hallelujah. 
Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen, every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that, it is on the strength of that. The Bible says, although he has put all things under his feet, he said we do not yet know. I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that. Um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there, let me tell you something. The people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do. Are you following me now? There are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night and right now, my goodness, there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three. It's not just a recitation. You're going to shout that name. The name that paid access for your liberty. Bring up, bring them out. My goodness. Deliverance is already happening inside and outside. There will be mighty angels. There is the sword of the spirit. Lord, let there be deliverance. Every family. Every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage. I invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three, those devils are under fire. One, two, three. Come out now. I command powers. Be gone now. I cause principalities. I cause spirits, I cause powers inside, outside. The angel of the Lord is moving. I command witchcraft. Bring them out. Spirits of ancestry. In the name of Jesus. The powers that have tied down man's destinies. The forces that have refused to let you go right now. I come with an apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names let fire fall from heaven over your life over your academics over your marriage through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves lift your hands was he shouting one more time? Please bring them. Listen, for some of you, what will happen right now is not just for you alone, but for your family. Just keep them down there. Hallelujah. 
Malakata. And I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied. Makoto Tobakata. Sheketelekaya. As you shout that name, Jesus, you may not even know that that thing is in your family. But all of a sudden, physical fire, physical fire will begin to burn. Right now, on the count of three, I challenge those powers. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. I cause that spirit. Delay. Delay. I cause that spirit inside and outside. I command that devil of delay to go now. I command that power tying your destiny. I command that power tying your breakthrough. I command that power tying your family. The price has been paid by the blood of Jesus. I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus. I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus. I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus. I release marriages. I release miracles. I command breakthrough. Makatete Teleba. Fire is burning. I command breakthrough. I set those altars on fire. I set those covens on fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Where are those who have been oppressed academically? Lord, where are they? There are people who would have moved forward. As I speak right now, fire is coming on people. Fire is coming. Release the academics now. Release the academic now. Release the academic now. 2015, the year of the rain. Release the academics now. I command those powers. I challenge them. They must leave. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years. 10 solid years. But as I prophesy right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I pray and I prophesy. The Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied. And, and see, when your hands are tied, it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there. Lift your hands. Some of you will feel physical fire. Physical fire on your hands. There are chains burning. Lord, where are they? Let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression. Right now as I speak, anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit, I command those hands to be loose now. I command those hands to be loose now. The fire is falling, falling, falling inside and outside, falling. I break the chain. My goodness, there are angels outside. The fire is falling. Chains of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, 
lift up the exact situation you want God to change begin to talk to him go ahead before prophecy comes please don't keep quiet no matter how impossible it is there is an anointing inside and outside make sure you are talking to the Lord this and that and that are my requests do a miracle some of you need a 24 hour miracle now all those here in front in the name of Jesus and by the fire of the Holy Spirit at the count of three not only will those devils leave they must release your family members I speak to every spirit you know my voice I represent the embassy of heaven and in the name of Jesus at the count of three you will leave now one two three go 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 never to return never to return never to return never to return go go hallelujah stretch your hands towards this request your requests are there please in case you've not dropped yours locate it quickly to the ushers it's not a ritual there is a mystery of answered prayer hallelujah the bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before God the threats may be joblessness it may be impossible situations as I kneel upon this request and we pray together just for one or two minutes see I assure you I assure you you will return with a testimony except you refuse to come and testify stretch your hands and begin to pray thank you Jesus Remember last week we thought that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of jesus christ in this year of the rain i command that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs 
Let there be dramatic breakthroughs. Let there be dramatic breakthroughs. By the agency of the Spirit, we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of Jesus. The laws of favor, the laws of destiny help us in the name of Jesus. I pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's PhD right now in this year of the rain I command speed for you. I declare move forward now. Move forward now. Make progress now. Move forward now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for anything that has died in your hands. Business, the works of your hands, relationships, in the name that is above all names. Let resurrection happen in your life now. Please believe what I'm saying. Believe what I'm saying. God is changing people's situations. This is how God changes situations by the power of His prophetic word. I say it again. Whatever has died, I speak to that which was dead. Come back to life now. I command every blood condition whoever is standing here and you are SS right now we change that genotype to AA in the name of Jesus Christ I cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of Jesus we cause HIV you leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits, you sleep in the night and they oppress you. Reketeke poto shupatala makata. Shekete In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring deliverance to you now. Ayaya. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring deliverance to you now. There are people here. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Then it fails. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life. The power of God is moving on this word. Moving strong on this word. The last time it happened. The mystery behind that tragedy I cause it in the name of Jesus I declare that in this January between now and next month's miracle service what you could not do in the whole of 2014 may my God empower your hand to do it in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every dying CGPA here. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I command it to come alive. There are people here. Students. Your true status is first class. But something has tied you down. Your true status is four points. But something has tied. Whatever that something is. I lift it off your life now. In this year 2015 go back to your departments and break barriers in the name of Jesus I pray for every business here whatever has stopped it from working in the name of Jesus we command it to come alive now whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you I call them forth now I call them forth now 
I declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they said there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of Jesus Christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of Jesus may the Lord compel them to respond in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life every worry everything that has robbed you I command fresh impartation of prayer grace receive it now fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the Bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and I pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of God that has robbed you of your Christian integrity you love God but you find things pushing you that embarrass you right now I agree with you be delivered now I agree with you be delivered now hallelujah whoever is being eyed for death in this place that the devil has vowed that you will not see February miracle service and pray by the mystery of the blood I open that door of gate of, of death and I command in the name of Jesus that your soul is ransomed from the gates of death in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of Jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of Jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus I establish the covenant of peace upon your life you are protected by the angels of heaven I declare right now that in 2015 living from hand to mouth that spirit of begging living from hand to mouth by the mystery of divine supply I bail you out of that wicked situation in the name of Jesus I pray for you whatever you wrote here as a request right now I agree with you that it is turned into a testimony I say it one more time whatever you wrote here as a request I agree with you we turn it into a testimony by the power that turned the rod of Moses into a serpent and back into a rod I turn what was here as a, as a prayer request by the power of the Holy Ghost let it become a testimony in your hands in the name of Jesus every factor that must be in place for you to stand here and testify I release it in the name of Jesus I pray we pray for our lecturers every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of Jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved I'm speaking any position that belongs to any God fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 I prophesy from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life 
you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the lord thank you jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the lord jesus you've never made him lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to christ remember we said the basis for your victory is what jesus christ has done wherever you are or you have once given your life to christ but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right don't say time is gone please wherever you are inside or outside you might be a new student you've been a christian all your life or you may be new in this town i pray right now that you respond to the call of god wherever you are you are returning to jesus or you are making decisions for the first time please make your way to the front be bold about it be bold about it i know god is talking to somebody don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person find your way to the front god bless you god bless you please make sure you celebrate them as they come celebrate them god bless you those outside no matter how far you are make your way to the front jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father if you deny me before men young and old make your ways you are not too far don't let the devil say you are far make your way run to the front run to the front forget about your neighbor or who you came with it's a personal affair tonight hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands as i leave you to pray say after me jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me tonight i repent of my sins i obtain forgiveness and cleansing wash me with the blood of jesus i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that i'm a changed person the power of sin is broken over my life and i'll never be the same in the name of jesus now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought this once to your throne may their decisions be genuine preserve them by the power of the holy spirit they will never be the same i break the power of sin over your life you have eternal life into your spirit and i declare that you're of the family of faith in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now i'd like you to follow the ushers follow the gentlemen waving their hands all of you this way they'll give you a few dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again Bye.